Geckos are some of the best pets in the entire world, but what if you want one of the big ones? Today, let's go over the top five biggest geckos you probably didn't know made great pets. My name's Adam, this is Darla. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. This is Darla, and Darla is a leopard gecko. Now, everybody knows about leopard geckos. They're probably one of the most popular pet animals that you can buy in a pet store after dogs, cats, small animals, and birds. So, some, uh, popular reptiles is what I'm trying to say. And when we think about geckos, we think that they're, you know, the average size gecko is one of these leopard geckos, but that isn't the case. Leopard geckos are actually one of the biggest that there are. The popular geckos are the ones that are big. They are the anomalies. Most geckos are really, really small. Think morning geckos, Lygodactylus, the really cool blue Williams eye. Those are the ones that I'm thinking of. So, it's really an anomaly to get geckos this big, but these are the ones that are popular as pets, and that's why you know about them. And this is a list for pet keepers, so I'm not going to go from the fifth biggest all the way to the first biggest, because some of them aren't good pets. For example, Smith's Green-Eyed Gecko is one of the coolest geckos. It's really big. It just, you can't find them in the pet trade, so we'll sub them out for something else. But let's start off with something that is truly big, number five. Giant Day Geckos. It's right in the name. Now, Giant Day Geckos are from Madagascar. Madagascar is part of Africa. I've been there before. There's a video right here if you want to see all the animals that I found. I actually didn't find, well, I did find them, but I couldn't get my hands on them because they're so fast. But I do have a pair of giant day gecko, Falsuma grandis, if you want to know the exact species name, in the big enclosure that's behind me, that big glass enclosure. I have two of them in there along with some other things. Do you want me to drop the entire video? Let me know in the comment section below and we can make that video. It's kind of a mess right now. There are some snakes and they destroyed the logs and tonight we're cleaning it up and putting the logs back where they belong. But anyway, back to giant day geckos, they can live in harmony with a lot of other animals, but they're going to eat smaller animals. These are omnivorous animals that eat a lot of insects and they're going to eat a prepared diet in captivity. So think crested geckos, which aren't going to make the list, sorry. <laughs> booped him on the nose, her. You know that leopard geckos can vocalize actually? They make like little clicking sounds. Gets me every time, so cute. Giant day geckos are gonna get up to 12 inches for big adult males and up to about 60 grams. So they are the smallest ones on the list, but they're called giant day geckos. They're amazing, great pets. They will lose their tails and rip off their skin to get away from predators. They're one of the most unique species and a true icon. Everybody recognizes one when they see them. Number four, the most common one on the list. We'll go to some less common ones after this. Leopard geckos. Now you might not think leopard geckos as these huge monster gecko species, but really compared to a lot of other geckos, they're much larger. These animals are going to get up to a foot long if you get a really big male, and they're going to get up to 80 grams, again, if you get a really big male. Normally, 45, 60 grams for females, 60-ish grams for males, something like that, and then up and above. But it's one of those things where they're super common. They have those movable, workable eyelids like most gecko species do not. They are terrestrial. They're the only terrestrial one on the list. They have those really cool, strong feet that are used for climbing structures. So they're going to climb things like sticks, bricks, things that you'd encounter out in the wild. And they have that amazing fat tail where they're going to store energy. So if the tail does get dropped, they will grow it back. But of course, it's a lot of resources that go into that. So if you have a pet gecko, don't <laughs> rip on its tail. Some species will grow it back like leopard geckos. And then some species like crested geckos, like you can see here, they'll never grow them back. So leopard geckos, you can buy really, really cheap. You can find them for, you know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Uh, breeders who are trying to get rid of normals or genetics that really aren't worth anything. And then they go into the thousands, right? Everybody knows the Black Knights were $2,000 a piece when they first started coming out as pure Black Knights. And then now the price is dropping. So this isn't really an investment species most of the time. You can get them pretty affordably. Even a gecko like this, which is a Tremper albino eclipse. So it has that really cool eye mutation where the eye looks eclipsy, I guess. In this animal, I'd probably sell for 150 Canadian dollars, something like that. So basically, you know, what's that? Uh, 13 US dollars, something like that. Either way, not huge, but one of the bigger ones. I wanted to include them and let's get on to something a little bit cooler that maybe you haven't heard of. Number three. Europlatus, and we're going to talk about two species because one is bigger technically, but the other one is better for a pet. So Gigantus, that's the biggest technically, although Fimbriatus is the one that we're going to spend our time with. So Europlatus Fimbriatus, or common flat-tailed gecko, I think is the common name. Leaf tails, oftentimes it's just easier to use Latin names. So either way, they're both from Madagascar. 
I actually had a Fimbriatus brought in from Madagascar. There's a whole story right here of why I don't have it. And I love this animal. <laughs> Amazing species. Look at those eyes. They look like, imagine in a horror movie, you know, like when someone looks in the mirror and then they look down and they look up as the jump scare that I imagine it's going to be one of these guys. I mean, the cutest scary face of all the cute scary faces in the history of Everton. Just adorable and really easy to take care of because they are going to be, well, mostly insectivores. They might eat smaller lizards or something like that in the wild, but in captivity, you'll feed them things like roaches. Discoid roaches are really good if you live in Canada or Florida, where dubias are illegal, for example, and they're just overall really good feeders. You can get things like crickets. A black soldier fly larva is an underrated feeder. There's a link below my friends at Grubterra. You get 10% off if you use my code. Just overall really easy, but they have those really cool noses. When I posted a close up of this animal that I have on Instagram, which is right here, by the way, if you want to follow me, really appreciate it. We do giveaways and stuff sometimes. Everybody thought it was a caiman. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people thought it was a caiman. They look amazing. This is a gecko that looks so close to a caiman that we had hundreds of people guess that's what the species was. The It looks like a galaxy in their eyes and they have those sticky fingers that are so sticky you can feel it. And then they have on the edge of them kind of like a claw, which we're going to talk about Ractodactylus in a bit. And they don't have a, an eyelid like the the leopard geckos do. So they lick their eyes, which is super duper cool. And they're really big. I mean, these animals are gonna get over 12 inches, sometimes up to 13 inches. They look much bigger than something like a leopard gecko and a lot cooler as well, in my opinion. Number two, toke geckos. Now, toke geckos are the only one on the list that I would never keep. They're actually the only one on the list I don't keep. And it's just simple, the reason why. They're the second biggest gecko species in the world. The number one will be number one. We'll get to it in a second. These are from Indonesia and parts of Southeast Asia. I just say Indonesia because I remember sleeping in Bali, Indonesia one night and all I could hear is toke. Like they have this really cool call that sounds like toke. It's really, really cool. They look like a Pokemon. They're bright, vibrant. There's a lot of morphs coming out. They can climb up walls, climb up glass. They're super fast, just amazing animals, but they will bite you and it will hurt. Unless you're the Gecko Whisperer. Uh, there's a second name for that. It's called uh, Reptiliatus. Dion trains his in such a way that they literally jump onto his shirt, jump onto his hands, eat a bug or two, and then crawl back. But for most of us, I promise you they're going to bite you. I was in the jungles of Southeast Asia. Every single one that we found would scurry away from us. And the one that we did catch bit the heck out of Dave Kaufman. And judging by the way Dave smells, he probably doesn't taste good. So that just tells you how badly these guys will defend themselves, how badly they want to defend themselves. And it's defensive, it's not aggressive. But at the same time, if you want a really big gecko that is beautiful, maybe the most beautiful gecko in the world and has a really cool call, you can't go wrong with a toke gecko. We're talking up to 16 inches and up to 400 grams. Four, that's five times the size of one of these at their full size. And number one, the biggest gecko species in the world that also makes a great pet, Lichianus geckos. Now the Ractodactylus family, which used to include Cresta geckos, but doesn't, are a bunch of geckos, mostly from New Caledonia. Are they all from New Caledonia? I'm pretty sure they're all from New Caledonia, which is an island nation kind of close to Australia here on a map. They are really cool animals. So this is the same sort of idea, very similar to Cresta geckos, although they're technically a different genus now. The Sarahs, which I think are the most underrated and hopefully will get less expensive so we can all buy them because they're really cool. Gargoyle geckos and Chihuahua geckos. So these are the biggest of the bunch. And there's other ones too, rough snouted geckos and things like that that are just less common. But either way, lychees are the king of the castle. They're the biggest. It's not even close. They are the biggest gecko in the world. And there's a bunch of different localities. Like the one that I have here has pinks and greens. Sometimes you're gonna get them where they're almost completely drab colored, like one of these Chihuahua geckos that you see here. And just, they have a weird face. They have a unique looking face. They have that short, stubby little tail that looks kind of different. They're bigger. They look different than the other Ractodactylus and former Ractodactylus from that same area. Now they're gonna eat the same diet, basically. I mean, maybe a tiny bit different, you know, uh, they'll eat more insects, let's say, than a crested gecko, but you'll feed them insects and then you feed them things like Rapashi or Pangea, wherever, it doesn't really matter to me which one you get. A prepared gecko diet. So they're really easy to take care of. They just get much bigger. And keep in mind, they will bark at you given the chance. So not as vocal as a toke gecko by any means, but they can make sounds. And also if they bite you, it does suck. And some of them are notorious for biting. I mean, the species in general is notorious for, but not like a toke gecko by any chance, but I mean, ours is okay. Mine doesn't bite me. There's a lot of great ones that you can see on the internet. Uh, Dion's again, Reptiliatus, don't bite him. You see reels and TikToks and these things are just like out for blood. Really, they're just being defensive because they're a defensive animal. 
But either way, if you wanna get an animal that's not going to bite you and you want a cool gecko species, crested geckos, although they can bite because anything with a mouth can bite, dogs, cats, kids, your spouse, anything with a mouth can bite. But these animals are much less likely to bite. And although they are big animals, they are big geckos anyway. They didn't make the list, but I mean, you can't go wrong with a crested gecko. Especially considering I sell crested geckos for about 40 bucks Canadian and Lichianus geckos are something like eight, nine, $2,000 sometimes, so big difference in price also. And for the size, what you've all been waiting for, up to 17 inches and up to 500 grams. Now keep in mind, all these are like top of the scale. You're likely, all these animals are gonna be a little bit less. So Elite Giannis, 250 to 500 grams, 12 inches to 17 for a big one. So keep in mind, these animals, because I'm saying, oh, it's a 13 inch, sometimes they're not gonna make it that big. They're gonna be smaller, right? Just like humans. We can say, oh, human beings grow to seven and a half feet tall because there's a few NBA players, that, but realistically, how many of us grow that tall? Not very many of us, and certainly not me. Everyone who has ever met me is laughing hard now. Either way, let me know in the comment section below what you think is the coolest of all the geckos and the big geckos. Would you ever consider getting a giant gecko? Let me know in the comment section below. Please do hit the like and subscribe button while you're down there. And if you wanna leave a comment for next week's video, I take all the ideas from there. As always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, discounts on merch. You guys get one-on-ones. That's my new favorite feature. If you sign up, we can just have a chat on Zoom, stuff like that. All that for as little as a dollar a month. And uh, I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. So I'll see you in the next one.